throw it out the question for these guys. Cool. Uh, my name is <laughs> Tabitha St. Germain. Um, and I play Rarity in Granny Smith and Lunar Nightmare Muna and a uh, panoply of other characters on the show. And how can I help you? <laughs> yes. Can you tell us a little bit how you got uh, interested in acting? How I got interested in acting? Um, well, reality is a bit of a pip, isn't it? And um, I just always liked playing pretend. And it seems to me that when I was growing up, there were uh, many more practical people people doing actual jobs and work and so there was a, a void for uh, people who wanted to just play and muck around and I filled it. Any other questions? I have a question. Yeah? Uh, you just mentioned that it's like kind of playing and being theatrical, theatrical is kind of like a major point. Is that something you really carry with you as like just as an actor in general? Um, well, uh, as an actor, yeah. Uh, but it's very much switched for me from when I was little. I was always in kind of an imagination, imaginary world. Um, uh, but now it's very much relegated to my profession and I like to be practical in my life and keep the drama on screen. <laughs> yeah. For your like Twitter and so forth, you have a very unique way of speaking, you know, Tabitha-isms, as it were. Do you have a particularly favorite one, like chickadee dumpling or something strange like that? Chickadee dumpling? Um, <laughs> do, do you mean an expression is the yeah, favorite? Yeah, like the really quirky ones that are unique to you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not really sure. Do I have a favorite thing that I've already said? Yes. <laughs> internal catchphrase? Uh, no, I mean, you know, you lay your eggs and they hatch when they hatch, right? <laughs> you can't go back and sit on a pre-hatched egg. <clears throat> right, um, Forrest S, uh, J1 Studios. Hi. I'd just like to know uh, what the very first um, idea for Rarity's voice sounded like. The very first idea for Rarity's voice? Well, um, the breakdown said something sound, that sounds a bit like Audrey Hepburn. Um, and I don't remember precisely, precisely what I did, but it was a sort of a semi-Connecticut, um, more Haley Mills than Mid-Atlantic. Do you know who Haley Mills was? Um, uh, it, it was more kind of, uh, had a little more um, almost old, um, old kind of movie bit of that sort of, but it was, um, it sounded a little too old, and I think previous generations of Rowdy were, uh, was uh, uh, Rowdy in the G3 was played by Venus Terzo, um, and they played her like actually, you know, like a 30, 40 years old, and they wanted something younger, but also posh, okay. so, yeah. Cool. Rainbow Plasma QDR Crusaders. Yeah. Um, so yesterday we talked a little bit with Andrew Lipman and, and Claire Gullett, and uh, some of them mentioned that they, they had worked with you in the past before uh, My Little Pony. Can, so can you describe your relationship with some of the voice actors and actresses that you've worked with uh, before the show? Uh, yeah. Well, when I met Andrea Lidman, she was this big. <laughs> and um, she was very, very, very shy. Or, um, but, um, well, not, maybe not shy, but she didn't speak. She just had those great big eyes and she just kind of like take it all in and um, and then sometimes just drop a very insightful bomb. Like I don't know if you've really looked closely at Andrea, but she's like a, a wise child, you know, and she's always been a wise child. You just sort of, she looks all innocent and then she just is really, really, really intelligent. I mean, she's got a degree as an engineer, right? It's just kind of not a usual thing for a cartoon actor, but, um, uh, so she's always been, you know, um, she's much more out of her shell than, than she was. But she's always been um, kind of a magical person. And Claire, <laughs> Claire is, um, uh, well, you know, she's becoming more of an adult now, and she was an absolute monkey when she was a child. As you know, I bring cookies to every session, <laughs> and um, 
one of the funniest things in the world was to give Claire a cookie, and then about five seconds later, she would literally run around the studio, run around the studio, run around the studio, and not even be panting, and then just stand at her mic and start, <laughs> and you'd have to like put your hands on her shoulders, and she would then speak. So she's changed considerably, but she's a, a tremendous actor. She's really, really funny. And, uh, and she gets a lot, I don't know if you know Ian, her dad, Yes. She gets a lot of her um, <coughs> of her humor and and uh, madness from him. There's quite an acting dynasty there. Yeah. Yep. Right, check Carolina Radio. Of course, you also play the Princess of the Night, Princess Luna. Mm -hmm. uh, what's it like playing her and being placed as the first character, considering her impact in the first premiere episodes of the first season, leading up to today? First, uh, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> Shall I do the intro? <laughs> um, uh, of course, you play Princess Luna. On, yes. Uh, but we, we already know that. Uh, but uh, what was it like <laughs> getting to play her, and uh, what was it like uh, involving her character from the very first episodes? first season to uh, where she is today, considering all the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the change that she's gone through from, you know, being the dreaded Nightmare Moon to right. being the important sister of Celestia. Well, uh, you know, Princess Luna's personality entirely depends on the writer. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what, uh, I, I just asked Josh Hayward, do they get a Bible of all the stuff? the shows that have gone before, and he said, no, he mostly relies on reading stuff from bronies to know <laughs> what the history of a character is. So, um, you know, it's always a surprise. I honestly have no idea. The evolution is what whatever shows up on the page Well, at I guess I'd be uh, referring to, you know, like, you know, you're playing, first, like, you're starting to play this super bad character. Yeah. Evil, you know, wants to take over the world. Right. You know? You see, as, she, as the show goes on, she becomes you know, more sweet, more uh, more trustworthy, more loyal, more loyal to her citizens. You know, right. so you know, entering in just as you know, dun dun dun, dun to do, mm -hmm. so, something like that. So you know, what, what's it like? You know, going from you know super bad to super bad, or does that make any sense at all? Uh, yeah. Well, it's um, uh, it is a good question. Um. But it's, you know, I mean, it's all in, <laughs> it's all in a day's work, isn't it? I mean, you're super bad and super good all the time. And, and sometimes, you know, you play a schwack of different characters from <laughs> to <laughs> in, <laughs> in one day, right? So, yeah. Yeah? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, right back. Um, I'm going to ask you a question right now. Uh, you, you're, you're very active on Vine with a, with a lot of the, the things going on around you. Mm -hmm. Has, has... Being so connected with social media, um, has that, that changed the way that you interact with your fans when they come and see you uh, at, at cons and stuff like that? Like the, uh, being able to recognize some of them from online and such like that? It well, I, it's always you? interesting to me to meet um, people that I already have a relationship on, on Twitter and that kind of thing. We were recently, Kevin and I were recently in Finland, and um, I met a slew of people there that and it was pretty wild to be able to see these these guys that I had no idea who they were, what they looked like, and you know, Hexagon Maine presented himself to me in full chrysalis costume, and you know, I've never I've never met him before. I was just like so so sweet. I love to I love to meet the people that I've met on Twitter and so forth. But uh, people don't send vines to me enough. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> the more the merrier. There's some time after this. We'll <laughs> Actually, speaking about of Twitter, I was just looking at your account, and um, I came across a very interesting uh, photograph. Oh yeah, the, is that the face in the clouds? Um, oh, it, oh, that's the potatoes. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at that. <laughs> what? It says, it says uh, Baltimore's potato world, yeah. and, and then uh, a, a customer crazed by lack of in-flight food climbed out the planes to feast. Hashtag riot. <laughs> that's that's really clever. I, I was just wondering what was going on with. Potato world. Uh, well, was, we were hungry. We were on the plane, and planes no longer. You know, when I was growing up, it was a uh, thousand fifty years ago plus, and uh, going getting on a plane was an occasion at the time. You know, stewardesses were all you know gorgeous, and the meals everywhere. And now it's it's an air. Like, they literally call it an air bus. 
So it's a bit of a different thing, and, I, and, and you know, they serve you food that's actually plastic reconstituted in some way. So we were looking at those, you know, mashed potatoes out there. It's just wishful thinking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cool. Do you do photography a lot too? Because that was a well, just just with my iPhone. Um, okay. Yeah. And I like, uh, there's an app that I really like called Be Funky. It's just a little thing with different filters and oh, contrast and stuff, you know. Cool. Do you, do you enjoy traveling to these cons? I know that we've talked to uh, a couple of voice actresses mm -hmm. that have said that they use these cons as kind of an excuse to travel all over the world and see different places. Are you of the same ilk? I travel very badly. If I could take my entire house, garden, and cats, it'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, plus my bath and a couple of my friends and some of my neighbors, that would be great. But I, I'm not a really good traveler, to be perfectly honest. Um, I really like my home. <laughs> so, but I don't know, I mean, it's one of those things where I really feel like it's probably good for me on levels that I don't even understand. So, um, without knowing really, really the whys and the wherefores, I actually sometimes just make myself travel. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Do you have any like <clears throat> you know social causes or whatever that you're really passionate about? I know last year with Nicole Oliver mm -hmm. we had this discussion kind of about the you know, cultural influence of um, Pony and where it might go, what it might do 20 years from now, that sort of thing. So sort of in the same boat where you have know, some issue that you really like to discuss or feel passionate about or anything of that sort. Uh, yeah, I don't know that it's really related to the fandom, but I mean, for uh, no, me, no. it's and that was just yeah. an example. Yeah. yeah. Well, for me, it's the it's the environment, and I feel that the I mean, I don't want to get too far into it because this is about ponies, but I feel we are at a crossroads, and it's very very important to trans uh, to create the infrastructure for a non oil and gas coal based society into cleaner forms and it's all there all the tech is there now um, it's just creating the infrastructure it's just people having faith in it it's just people electing people who don't deny climate change um, you know that kind of thing so yes and I will go absolutely loony and <laughs> to the last breath to defend nature so there you go Solar powered roads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was an awesome. Did you see this? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah, it was, so yeah. So speaking of nature, uh, what kind of garden do you have at home? Um, what kind of stuff do you grow? I grow mostly the biggest flowers I possibly can. I love everything that's like big blooms. I love big California poppies. I love peonies. Mm -hmm. Just love peonies. Uh, but they have a very short span. And right now my dahlias are up. I also grow vegetables and herbs and stuff like that too, you know, just uh, stuff that you eat. like to go and pull potatoes out of the garden, stick the herbs on them, you know. Um, but uh, it's mostly flowers that, that I, I love, yeah. I want to take it back all the way to the Legend of Zelda Adventures. <laughs> <laughs> I recently watched that and I thought it was just the funniest thing in the world. And, and Sprite adds a lot to this show because um, it, it's really random, like the, um, the dynamic between Link and Zelda is kind of like cute and a little romantic, but Sprite is just trying to, you know, make something happen with Link and <laughs> she's a little pushy about it too. So. Yeah, she was, yeah. She's a, she's a Tinkerbell gone, hmm, <laughs> what? Yeah, totally. I think my favorite line was like, oh, you should, she doesn't have anything on me, stick with me, Link. And he's like, um, you're three inches tall. She's like, you don't like short girls? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, for Saucer Radio, with all the roles that you've done in the past, what do you feel has been the hardest role to get out? The hardest role? Yeah. Hardest, 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 hardest. Well, I think perhaps uh, it may actually be Luna because it it uh, it changes, so I don't always know my feet for Luna. Like, um, um, yeah, it seems to be very much of the moment. So it's finding the common ground between all the things that have gone before and then what what I what I get writing wise. It sounds like it because of how her dynamic has changed from yeah. the first episode to now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Especially about the shouting. <laughs> the shouting, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Aaron, it's uh, J1 out studios. But, yeah. Um, what, what got you so interested in all these roles? Did you just audition for all of them or were you offered a chance to be Rarity, Luna, Nightmare Moon? Um, 
Uh, I didn't audition for a lot of the roles. They, I'd done all the generations of uh, MLP before. Uh, so I didn't audition for Pinkie Pie because that was very like Minty. Like the character description was very like what the old Minty. And they didn't want to hear anything they'd heard before from anyone. Uh, Wisteria was very much like Fluttershy, so I didn't bother with that. Um, and what frequently happens to me as an actor is the casting agent will say, this is the character that we're having the most difficulty finding, so don't bother about the others. Can you just give us the one we have the difficulty finding? And that was Rarity. So, um, and I think for the first episode, um, the Nightmare Moon episode, they actually were going to have a celebrity initially. And then, um, I don't know, it was just sort of up in the air, and I think I did a scratch track first. And this has happened to me before in my life where they've said, can you just, uh, by a scratch track, I mean, will you just uh, lay in the lines mm -hmm. for placement, and when we get the proper actor, the real actor, then uh, we'll bump your butt. Uh, but uh, this happened to me with Martha Speaks, which was uh, initially to be uh, for Ellen DeGeneres, who very kindly declined, probably because of the budget. Uh, and then um, I think they offered it to somebody else too, and same thing. It was low budget, so they so they ended up because I just done the scratch, and then they played it for a test audience, and the test audience liked it, so triumph, right? <laughs> Actually, um, I was just wondering about uh, how Derpy got a voice, uh, and personally, I just thought that was a little weird because she almost makes like a Where's Waldo appearance in every episode, <laughs> and it's usually silent. Um, did you feel any sort of way about them telling you to give her a voice for the first time? Uh, for the first time? Well, you know, it just came, I mean, I can't answer too much about uh, that, but uh, the first time it came up, it was just like, you know, when we're in the room and they have very small characters that, um, and especially in the first couple of seasons, they didn't even bother putting out audition calls. They'd just be anyone in the room, try this role, or they just assign it. So they just assigned it, and um, as you know, I didn't know if it was a boy or a girl. Um, and uh, so I just kind of, yeah, just kind of winged it. And I thought it was super cute. And, um, and you know, she was a really, really helpful, sweet, kind of open character. Although I thought she was a he. <laughs> <laughs> just a wrong. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> How about uh, working directly with Claire Corlett? You know, I know we asked her a couple questions yesterday because of that dynamic that you have with the older sister, younger sister, Claire yeah. and Sweetie Belle. How does that dynamic work in the studio? Um, we're pretty much exactly the same. <laughs> 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 no, um, she's a. Uh, I just really, really like working with her. I'm really familiar with her, so uh, there is actually a, for me a strong familial element as well. Like I've worked with her on Dinosaur Train. Um, she knew I, she made appearances in lots of other shows when, when she was little. Um, I don't know. I mean, I always had a kind of a feeling of um, when she first started, uh, don't mess with Claire. I'm taking care of this one. Because, <laughs> you know, when, when kids come into the studio for the first time, they don't know what their permission is. They don't know the dynamic of the room. So. Oftentimes, I'll be a bigger idiot so that they know that they can really play and be a big, big idiot. And then, you know, and then also pay attention when the director speaks and just give him ultimate. But also, you need to know that you can play. You need to have permission. And uh, if it's too stricty, stricty in the room, a kid will just shut down. So, you know, I'll joke with the director more than maybe even is good. <laughs> but just so that they know that they, they don't have to shut down. Uh, a lot of a lot of your fellow voice actors said you do a lot of improv in the studio uh, for, for 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 rarity. Um, <laughs> do you do you do that for other shows like Martha Speaks? I know it's more more educational. I want to say more educational, more uh, yeah, more more educational. And uh, do, do you do a lot of improv for that at all? Uh, well, I mean, improv happens, um, but I don't really. You don't plan it. Um, <laughs> Uh, very often I'll just riff on something, I uh, don't always expect them to take it, and very often they don't. It's actually really kind of, uh, you know, writers spend a lot of time writing the script, and it's also not just one person, it's a group effort, so they want it 
to be their <laughs> words. So it's really, in a way, um, frowned upon to to improvise. Well, sometimes I can't help it. <laughs> um, there are other shows that I do, uh, primarily nerdcore shows, um, that they encourage you to to improvise, and I do actually really love improvising because you know you you I don't know if writers always speak aloud when they write, so sometimes things just are a little clunky. Could use a little bit of a more natural something or other, um, and sometimes people will describe things that you're actually going to see visually, so you don't need. Um, could you go and get me that green dress over there? Because we're going to see a green dress. You could just say, could you get me that? So sometimes it's a shorthand is, is nice to, you know. Well, speaking of the uh, yeah. improv, I know uh, I've heard uh, that for Randy Smith, a lot of that is like a little bit of it's written, a lot of it's no improv. So uh, maybe, could you maybe tell us a little about uh, doing improv for Randy <laughs> Smith? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, don't, I don't know that that's totally true. I mean, I do tend to blow off a bit. I just really like the sound of my own voice when I listen to Granny Smith because it makes me laugh. So, um, yeah. But I do, do try to stick to the script. <laughs> yeah. As Rarity, what's um, the funniest improv or just, you know, silly thing you've ever done in character that just made you, you know, lose it in laughter? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really, uh, I don't record myself. <laughs> so I, I'm not really sure. I do know there was an example, and I believe it was Too Many Pinkie Pies, that a lot of the other voice actors will bring up where you were trying to shove, um, uh, was it Pinkie Pie's, uh, Pinkie Pie's place? Yeah, sure. Uh, sugar, sugar cube corner. corner. So you are trying to like knock it over and push it down. And so you were recording a bunch of basically rarity grunting, trying to move a house noises. Oh. And apparently it was the most fantastic moment any other voice actor said. <laughs> really? Oh, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> well, um, I watched an interview uh, that you did about a year or two ago, and you described some um, brony uh, moments that you had had, maybe some encounters or so. Have there been any recent ones that have really surprised you, or that some, some that really stand out for whatever reason? Uh, well, we were just in Finland, and um, we had a, a, a photo shoots with people could, um, you know, come in and have a photo shoot with me. And this guy came in, and he was, we, you know, we just posed and had fun, talked to each other a little bit. And he was going out, and he said, "You're the stupidest woman I've ever met." And he said it with this great affectionate <laughs> smile. And I was like, yes! <laughs> and then uh, later he, uh, he passed me a letter explaining that he um, thought that people who had, and this is very kind of him, that had a, a, a sort of genius were actually usually idiots in, in some other uh, way. Of, and he said, I was the biggest idiot in the world which I thought was very lovely. Uh, and he also gave me a dog blanket. <laughs> so <laughs> that was unusual and funny, yeah. Uh, like what we're talking about with acting styles with improv, um, when you were starting out with acting, like what kind of styles of acting did you want to do? What kind of styles of, um, well, I've always been attracted to comedy. Uh, I used to watch a lot of French films when I was younger. Um, and I really liked how stroppy and moody all the chicks were. So, particularly when you're younger, when you're a teenager, to see a stroppy, pouty, um, not going to take it anymore kind of chick is always impressive. <laughs> so, uh, I always liked comedy. Um, uh, where I grew up in, in Swaziland, we had. Um, mostly dubbed kung fu movies that mm. all the movies were from china uh. so that's ended up being the type of movies i like to watch um i like basically science fiction and kung fu i'm extremely shallow when it comes to films there's no well i do like bergman but you know <laughs> but basically i just like to be entertained and i like people to kick each other <laughs> um, kind, of, kind of going off of that on a yeah. silly improv -y question yeah you know i like to ask the voice actors take their characters come up with some kind of silly movie idea for them oh, so yeah. if rarity were in a kung fu film oh wow what would it be called oh my um <laughs> <laughs> 
Cookie Fabulous. <laughs> I, um, I watch it. <laughs> when you mention the Kung Fu part, um, it just makes me think of the Discord the Harmony episode part two when you were doing the whole Kung Fu moves towards uh, AJ. Applejack. And oh. it just. Now I can sort of see where that came from. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you a fan of Bruce Lee? Just by Total sure. fan of Bruce right. Lee. <laughs> Love Bruce Lee. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Do you have a favorite in the whole kung fu genre? Um, I, I didn't remember any of the the names of the actors. I don't know if I I don't know if we even knew them because that we you know they were English voiced uh, and like you know off sync and every all that bad stuff. But uh, and they were all formulaic and the same. But those. Like those faces of those actors were more familiar to me than your Tom Cruises or you know, all that. So, um, yeah, no. <laughs> so, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, do you feel like um, you bring the sass to Rarity's character, or does Rarity let you be a bit more sassy than you normally would be? Um, I think we, the sass meets itself halfway. <laughs> <laughs> I know, like a lot of the writers, um, sort of go for the uh, for the vanity of rarity, um, and that's you know it lends itself to a fair amount of sass. <laughs> yeah. What is your favorite and least favorite thing about rarity? Uh, well, I don't really like the, the where it edges into judginess. Uh, and I think there's a way of being um, fastidious yourself without being judgy of other people's this, that, and the other thing. What's fastidious? Fastidious means um, uh, a little OCD yourself, like you have to have things a certain way. Um, or making that all about you and not about somebody else, like is a way of, of uh, communicating it that if I'm criticizing somebody else, everybody understands it's because it's my problem, not theirs, right? Yeah. And your favorite thing about Rarity? The same thing. The <laughs> 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 <Yes. laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What is your favorite thing about voice acting? About voice acting? Well, that you can be a complete hell hag and still get work. <laughs> So your relationship with uh, Claire and how you're rarity and she's sweetie on the show, do you two tend to playfully argue sometimes? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you're also on the, on the new hub series, uh, Sabrina, Secret of Teenage Witch. Yeah. Uh, how, what's it like working on that series and what do you think of your character? Um, I had a couple of characters in that. My favorite was the Troll Queen. She was awesome. She was all, yeah, yeah, bash, the guys are wrong. I really liked her a lot. Uh, so, uh, but you mean Vera Looper? I can't remember who else I played in there. Um, Did you yeah. one of the, uh, of the ants? Oh, yeah, right. Hilda or, or Hilda. Or, yeah, she was all, yeah, I like her a lot. She makes a lot of cookies. <laughs> and, which you then serve to the Which I then serve to the first, yeah, yeah, the Carl Lurie. Circle of Life. It was a very, very nice, simple series. Like, just go in, whoosh, done. So, I like that. And not so much screamy, yelly. I don't really like screamy, screamy, yelly work too much because you lose your voice and then you can't do the nice, high pitchy things mm. like that. <laughs> um, general question uh, mm -hmm. you were uh, in Naz on Ed, Ed, and Eddie? No, that's Aaron Fitzgerald. Oh. There's a little, uh, IMDb has a little bit of a. Um, Disconnect, uh, and uh, because I did actually do the very first episode as Naz, and then I think they may even have revoiced that because they ended up wanting to uh, just have whoever's in the room in the main characters do all the characters. So that's how that happened there. Okay. Plus, Aaron's a really great friend of mine, and she's tremendous in the role. So, oh, cool. It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> actually, do you have any other um, like really? good voice actor friends that you enjoy working with on other sh TV shows? Um, yeah, oh, so many, like too many to name. Um, the people that I see all the time are like uh, Kathleen Barr, who I think is the best voiceover actor in the world. Um, uh, Ashley, who's 
tremendous. Shannon Chan Ken now works a great deal, and she's really, really wonderful too. Really flexible. Uh, Ryan Drummond, uh, so amazing, so flexible as well. And uh, Trevor Duvall, although he's now moved to LA to become famous. <laughs> <laughs> So um, yeah, so there's people that I see really frequently, and those are that's mostly them. Uh, Sam Vincent too. Lee Tolkar is always in everything I ever do. <laughs> wow. What are some of your favorite uh, shows that you've done in the like the last ten years? In the last ten years, um, I love Martha. Martha speaks. Um, it's very very well written. It's a brilliant um, tool for people learning languages or for kids to learn vocabulary. And good stories, and um, I really love um, Jimmy Two Shoes. That was a lot of fun. And there's some preschool ones coming out now. Caden Mim Mim, which just opened in the UK. And uh, I like League of Super Eagle Evil because I got to be all the female characters. Um, although Scott McNeil did play lunch ladies and things, and really great girth. <laughs> and um, uh, it's you know, whatever's on the table. I like stuff that's got a lot of magic-y things in it, personally, or, or um, there's, there's certain types of animation that I prefer over others, like I prefer stuff that's more detailed, and I prefer, like I love the kind of color scape of, of, uh, of this show, and of Kate and Mim Mim, and then there are things that are all yellow, that I just loathe looking at because it gives me that synesthesia kind of feeling. <laughs> like I can't watch a cartoon that's all yellow and red. <laughs> too, much, too much of one color. Too much of one, well yellow specifically for some reason, like I can't watch, uh, although the writing is fantastic, I can't watch The Simpsons or Family Guy. Yep. Uh, when you've ever done a voice, have you ever listened to yourself and then got like, oh, maybe I should have done the voice like that? Yes. And how do you handle that? You suffer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, they show you a monster person and you come out with a voice like blah, 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 and then you realize you've got to sustain that for two hours and you're like, ah, oh why did I do that? <laughs> Is that where you just go home and just sip water all day? Just yes. Just you'll be able to talk tomorrow? Yes, yeah. it's absolutely that. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any like warm-up routines for getting into character or, or for dealing with those kind of voices? Um, I don't really, because I don't always know they're going to spring something on me. Um, uh, my main technique for warming up is actually singing my face off in the car. <laughs> so uh, if you pass me in a car in Vancouver and you see someone going... <laughs> <laughs> that, that's me. <laughs> yeah, love. Um, every VA seems to have a different answer for this one, but do you have, do you have your miracle cure for when you do blow your voice out? Uh, and other than just, just sipping water? Well, when I, when I, I've only done it once in my life, which was when I went to the, the convention in Texas and completely lost my voice for like two months. It, was, it went away. There was nothing to be done. It just went. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's such a backlog of shows. It was unbelievable. Um, but uh, it was just literally from too much yelly, screamy stuff. And... You know, some shows like you, they they'll say you, um, you just have to use a compressed uh, sound. Like you can't do Dragon Ball Z with open yells. They want like they want you, they want the pain. <laughs> they want the compression sound. So uh, I think um, I don't know for your longevity. If you're actually to be a voice actor, it's good to maybe limit those kind of shows, uh, taking those kind of shows, the really yelly, screaming ones, if you also have a high range and you also want to do the other stuff, or if you hope to sing for the rest of your life. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you know this, now this is just a rumor that there, there's a rumor going around here that rarity on the show tends to be a little overdramatic at times. Oh. A little, not, not too much, you know, just a little. Just <laughs> little in quotations. Um, do you uh, feel like you have like it comes naturally just to to emote and uh, just go over the top with the uh, with the drama, or do you have to dig a little bit to fit in the well to uh, to to achieve that level of perfected uh, dramatism? Dig. What is this dig? 
Um, dig. I don't, I don't really like to do things that are hard. <laughs> you get all mussy and <laughs> it's just ruins your mane. <laughs> I really don't like to dig. Although, if something does not go my way, <laughs> I will um, have to put my hoof, up, hoof down. Why didn't ask about the whiting? Yeah. No. Do you ever feel like uh, occasionally uh, Rarity does hit those higher kind of strainy uh, voice rolls? You know, you're mentioning you might not want to take too many of them if you want to keep your voice, but it seems like sometimes on the show she does have those kind of high range squeals or something like that. Yeah. Never with the kind of consistency that would actually wreck your voice. It's, yeah. a pr it's very, very mild compared to other shows. But I have found that if I do something like, oh, thank you, Precious Pants. Um, if I do something like, um, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, what's a good example? Well, like Dragon Ball Z. If I was to do something like Dragon Ball Z and then the next day have Rowdy and they say, like, do a high pitch scream, sometimes it's gone. Like, I'll be like, mm, you have to catch this on another day. <laughs> yeah. What is, out of curiosity, like the story behind Fairy Jacked? Because I remember seeing that on, I think, Vimeo, and it was just adorable. Thank you. And then, uh, so I'm curious where that came from. Um, if you don't know, Fairy Jack was a YouTube uh, <laughs> goofy series that I did. Uh, it, the story behind it is that I got a new Mac, and it had in it just the capacity, which none of my other computers were, but I didn't know how to work, but I just was like, how does this film thing work? Um, and so I was just trying to figure out how to use my new interesting software. So I was just experimenting with myself. So it just basically blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice that, I mean, if you did watch it, that the first episodes of it were just way too long. Because I, I discovered through trial and error that on YouTube, people really have an attention span of about three minutes, and then you're wasting their time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like my first episode was like 16 minutes. Just go, blah, blah, I love to hear myself talk. Love to hear myself talk. <laughs> Ooh, me, look at me. I'm so blah, right? You know, I mean, I don't know if, and you tell me, when you look at, and people are always fascinated by their own faces, and uh, do you find that too? Is that, is that everyone, or is that just me being an actor? <laughs> you know, look at what the monkey does, you know, and I mean, I don't spend a great deal of time looking at myself in the mirror, but actually looking at yourself on camera is completely different. And I didn't, I, you know, I wasn't smitten with my own looks. I didn't think I was like gorgeous pants or anything. But you, it is interesting. You're like, oh my god, that's actually what I look like. I look really weird. And when like make this sound, I look even. It's just interesting, you know, because I, I don't know if you always have a really sense of your self-image. And when you shift character, it's also, I, it's just that. It's just an interest in the weird things that you can do with yourself. As a director of like short films, uh. I get that a lot. You know, I'll be filming um, friends or people acting, and I'm just sitting there trying not to crack up because it's seeing them go through like a persona flip. <laughs> and yeah. when they see themselves, you know, they do the same thing. You're like, that's my face. It's very interesting. It's very interesting to realize how multi dimensional you are and how not fixed in time and space and how. You know, if you're a female, how you can actually have a real strong male component or vice versa, where you can have like a really aggressive, you know, your, your default might be completely passive, but you can be really high status or you can be, it's just, I find it really interesting and I don't quite know what it means or how it works, but that's why I say on Twitter I have no fixed point of identity because I really don't even understand what a fixed point of identity is. Yeah. <laughs> so you've done a lot of different roles throughout the years. Now, is there one that you, that in a current, you know, say cartoon or other production, is there one role that you just kind of really would like to try? If you just kind of you know, could go into the studio one day and just take on any character you wanted on any show, just to try it out. Is there some? Is there one role that in particular that interests you? Do you mean that somebody else has? Uh, it could be. Because <laughs> that's, I mean, we get asked that a lot. Who else would you want to play on the show? And well, not necessarily limited yeah. to the show, but just in yeah. general, is there a character out there that you are the admire or, you know, are enthralled with enough that you'd like to give it a shot? Uh, do you know the, the, temp, the 
that's a Tintin movie, yeah. yes, Steven right. Spielberg movie. Yes. Um, well, I grew up reading those books and I loved those books. And I would like to play Bianca Castafiore, the opera singer on that. As she's, uh, it was an awesome big character and I was like, mm, that, could, that, could, that could elevate a bit. And she was bigger in through the rest of the series. Right. Do you think you, you, you would say you could do it better than what they already did? <laughs> well, I could do it differently. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever had a moment like that where you've, you've seen a character before and then you got the chance to play her? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't. I don't think so. Uh, I'm sorry. I would have to think about that. <laughs> Shit, the Philo facts. Uh, can't think of one. No. Are there any um, alternate? Careers that you could have seen yourself doing had uh, you know acting not popped up, or, or were you always like you know, you'd, in theater programs and such? I always was. Uh, I could easily have been, in, and could still easily turn into a, a writer. I mean, I do write all the time, um, and I like that. But I do like the. I'm kind of rely on being an actor to be with other people because I'm such a social. Meh. You know, I just like to be, if, uh, you know, when I haven't been working sometimes, I mean, one time I, I was at a film and I hadn't worked for about three weeks and um, I went into the loo to have a pee and there was no toilet paper. So I had to um, ask the lady in the stall next door for the TP and when I spoke, I realized I hadn't spoken in three weeks. I hadn't said anything at all. And that's actually very natural to me. <laughs> you know, if left to my own devices, I just won't speak or I don't need to be around other people. And I don't know if that's because I am so much when I am, uh, but I do rely on being an actor to be around other people because otherwise I would probably wouldn't bother so much. It's very interesting. So like your writing time is like, you just say sort of your, you know, downtime to recollect yourself after like just blowing up in front of the, the microphones and stuff. And gardening is a huge, uh, um, huge thing for me too. Yeah. Nice. Or also, I I might have gone into holistic medicine. I'm really uh, is interested in all of that stuff. But, yeah. You should try kung fu. Try kung fu. That's a bit sporty, sporty for me. But I do like to watch it. <laughs> I think that is all the time we have, guys, unfortunately. Thank you very Thank much. You.